uh, in some words, our company. Uh, we are a small company uh, with about uh, 30 people, in, and we are uh, specialized on the holistic view of the water system. And this is uh, something new in the scenery. Uh, you know, uh, water companies usually uh, make drinking water or wastewater. In this company, uh, one membership is Karin Bielheiter. She is uh, two years old no, on <laughs> in, in our company. Um, uh, she is uh, something like a baby. Um, but she isn't a baby, she is uh, a very professional hydrologist. Uh, she is coming from the University of Freiburg, from Professor Leibungut, um, somebody may know him, from me, he is one of the greatest in the scenery. The interaction between geothermal use and groundwater and artificial groundwater recharge. Uh, we have done two research projects in the past. Uh, one is called KW Tempis and one is called Airport, which are dealing with uh, temperature anomalies. Please, start. Thank you. So, hello together. Um, thank you very much that we can do this presentation here. Um, show you where we are from. Here you see uh, Tirol and the heart of the Alps. Here you see uh, our office in Innsbruck, and we have also a laboratory. What's our topics? Our topics, as Dr. Uh, Fleischer got told, everything to do with water in Tirol, so power plants, um, resource researchers. Uh, measurements of springs, uh, energy concepts. Do you see uh, our laboratory, or we have uh, communities to handle or yeah, to use um, geothermal water, and especially groundwater is one of our topics. Here you can see uh, the inner city of Innsbruck, and there are the in blue the isoplastic lines of the groundwater. And you see the flow of the groundwater is in this direction, but there are some anomalies. You can see here, there's a groundwater use, and here are also some um, anomalies, which base on um, parts of the ground, or the impermeable part of the river in which flows here. Concerning the temperature of the groundwater, here you can see the area around our hospital. And as you can see here, there are temperature until uh, almost 20 degrees in the underground. Um, the reason for this are the underground buildings of the hospital, like underground parkings. And yeah, there are some specialties in Innsbruck, but I think it's a situation uh, <coughs> typical for um, urban areas. And our main aim is to um, maintain a healthy groundwater in quantity and quality. Um, Dr. Bleistacker um, developed a water resource system which has, like he told a uh, few minutes before, um, the holistic view on resources. What does this mean? This means um, we don't look have a close look to one problem or on one resource, but we have another look at other resources and to look on the situation around the political situation, geographical situation, demographical situation. And so we try to solve a problem with a holistic view. We have here our resource, in our case, the groundwater, and we have a demand. For example, we need groundwater for drinking water, we need uh, groundwater for cooling or for heating. If we need uh, groundwater for drinking, we need also a drinking water well. If we need groundwater for heating or cooling, we need a heat pump. There's also a relation between the demand and the cover of demand. If we need more drinking water, we need also more drinking water levels, or the drinking water levels must pump more. So there is also an interaction between cover of demand and resource, because um, 
if we take water from the ground or with the heat pump or with the drinking water, we change our pools of our ground water, the quantity and the quality. If we do more water in a certain area, the isoplastic lines will change in this area. And also, the temperature will change in the underground. What is happening in the ground? If you do an artificial groundwater recharge, the Water Tirol Company developed together with the University of Innsbruck and a computer company two simulation programs. They are research programs called Geotemis and Geopod. And they help us to illustrate what is happening in the underground because we don't see it. Here um, you have a house which needs, uh, for example, groundwater for heating. It takes groundwater with a temperature of 40 degrees, for example. It uses this hot water um, with a heat pump, and the return water has, has about 9 degrees. So, in this area around the well, where the water is returned, we have um, cold water, which warms up until again about uh, 40 degrees. So we have, especially here in this area, the temperature anomaly which goes till here. And this simulation program can simulate these temperature anomalies. In the simulation program, you have uh, different, uh, different uh, possibilities to calculate uh, temperature anomalies. Here I have mentioned three points. Here if you have uh, some examples of GV tempest. For example, here you see a temperature anomaly from uh, groundwater use for cooling. So here you get uh, warmer water back to the underground, which cools up till here. And here you see the opposite. You have uh, water for warming and the effect uh, cold water, which warms again after a little bit. Another example is here. Also here you have groundwater uses here and the temperature anomaly for here. The next step was to um, improve the program and now there is a program Geopod which can simulate also in three dimensions, not only in two. For example, um, the, the anomalies go not only in, a, in the same direction, but now uh, one of the inputs are isotensic lines. So the direction of the anomaly is really like the isotensic lines uh, in the ground. Here I brought some examples. You see uh, Innsbruck and the groundwater goes under Innsbruck. And you see there are some um, temperature anomalies and there's not a lot of space under the inner part of um, Innsbruck 3 of groundwater use. Also Innsbruck <coughs> not here. Mm -hmm. So how can these programs help us? It's not only that we have a three-dimensional view on uh, groundwater use and temperature analysis in the ground. But I think the programs can help us to uh, solve problems before they, they occur. Imagine we have two houses and they use the ground water for cooling, for example, hotels. So just uh, behind the hotel, um, there's one big temperature anomaly and the dimension of the temperature anomaly depends on the quantity of water which is given, given back, or um, the difference in temperature between the normal groundwater temperature and the given back temperature. And now let's imagine uh, we are thinking about uh, artificial groundwater recharge. That means we take water from a river or somewhere else and give it at a special place back to the groundwater. That means in a special area we have now more water than before and we change also the temperature of the groundwater. If we take, for example, uh, cold or hot 
Water Water from everyone. Here we have our groundwater recharge, and we see the quantity of water given back changes our isotopic lines in the set certainly. And also the temperature is um, changed, and so we can say uh, artificial groundwater re recharge is another kind of uh, heat pump. And here we can see the isotopic lines are changed. And now we have our two hotels, and we see the temperature anomalies of these two hotels intersect now. This is a situation we don't like. And also, there is here a problematic zone where we have really warm water, because we get warm water from this hotel and warm water from the artificial groundwater recharge. Also a situation we don't like. And so I think um, to do a simulation before can help us to see problems and perhaps to, to uh, solve them before they occur and so to uh, maintain a healthy groundwater. Before I will finish with my uh, presentation, I just would like to um, show you a little bit the situation, the groundwater situation in Tyrol. The picture there is the, it's shown the distance between the surface and the groundwater table. And you see in the black valleys, the groundwater is not far away uh, from the surface. Here in the valleys, and in the, in the mountainous areas, the groundwater is uh, deeper. Most of uh, Tyrolians live in the valleys. So, we could think it would be nice to take just groundwater or drinking water, for example. But, as in Tyrol, there are a lot of springs, which you can hear, which you can see here, all the points, I don't know if you can see them, there are many points, and all the points are springs. In the northern part of Tyrol, we have limestone. There are not so many springs, but really big springs, with about 200, 300 liters per second. And in the southern part, we have another geological situation. There we have a lot of springs, but small springs. So altogether, we have a lot of water from the springs. And so in Tyrol, most of drinking water is taken from the springs. There are two main reasons. First, um, it is easy to get the water from a spring Flying on the mountain to a house just by gravity. You don't need to pump or something else. And the second reason is um, the vulnerability of the resource itself. On the mountain, there are no traffic, no pollution, and so we can uh, take um, proper water for drinking water. So, I hope I could show you a little bit the situation in Tyrol, in Innsbruck, and also the interaction between